Welcome to the Marketplace Academy podcast. We're here with a new season all about Marketplace SEO. This series was published as articles at the end of 2022, and it is the ultimate source for learning search engine optimization tailored specifically to marketplaces. It was written by our fantastic head of content, Mira, and includes insights from three SEO experts, Mike van der Hayden, Michael Caldwell, and Gregory Edwards. If you've been following this podcast for a while, you may have seen the last three episodes. These were bonus interview episodes, which were basically the interviews Mira conducted while she was writing this series. They're a perfect companion to our series on Marketplace SEO, and you should definitely check them out. This first episode looks at what investing in Marketplace SEO entails, how to estimate the potential returns, and when is it the right time to take the plunge. So let's get into this first episode. Oh, and I'm Katri, your host. I'm so happy you're here. Marketplace SEO, the complete guide. The rules of search engine optimization, SEO, are the same for everyone. If you want to bring traffic to your business from search engines like Google, similar recommendations about site setup, keywords, content, and links apply whether your site is a marketplace, a business website, a blog, or an e-commerce store. But marketplace websites have characteristics that set them apart from most other websites. On the one hand, it can be hard for marketplaces to tackle technical SEO issues like site structure challenges, duplicate content, and low-quality content. On the other hand, marketplaces can benefit from their community to design a competitive keyword strategy, create engaging content, and build backlinks. In this series of articles, I'll give you a complete overview of SEO basics tailored to marketplace websites' unique challenges and opportunities. I've interviewed three top experts in Marketplace SEO to ensure each article is packed with practical and up-to-date advice for Marketplace founders. Mike van der Heyden is the CEO of Portal Ventures, an agency that helps marketplaces with SEO and invests in early-stage marketplaces. Michael Caldwell founded Gigmasters, now The Bash, in 1997 and currently runs Petworks with two decades of experience in building SEO-backed marketplace growth. Gregory Edwards is a senior SEO manager at Bulleray and has worked with half a dozen of the UK's biggest marketplace businesses to improve their SEO. SEO is a complex field that requires constant learning and adjustment, but knowing the basics can already make a huge difference for your business. Each episode will also include sources to deepen your SEO knowledge and stay updated with the latest developments. You can find those in the episode description. What is Marketplace SEO? Search engine optimization, or SEO, helps bring high-quality organic traffic to your marketplace through search engines like Google. Most SEO professionals concentrate on Google because its search market share is over 90%. So does this guide. By Marketplace SEO, I mean applying the tools and understanding of search engine optimization specifically to online marketplace websites. Michael Caldwell says marketplace SEO should be understood as its own field of expertise entirely. This is because marketplaces have unique opportunities and unique challenges when it comes to SEO. How SEO works with search engines. Search engines like Google exist to help searchers find what they're looking for on the web. Google sends bots to discover and read, i.e. crawl, pages on the internet. Google then collects the information the bots find and stores, analyzes, and organizes it. This process is called indexing. Google uses a variety of criteria to understand who has the best answers and to which questions. Based on them, it ranks the content. The highest ranked content is presented on the search results page, SERP for short. SEO helps you signal to Google that when someone types in a specific search query, your marketplace is the best match and should be shown higher than other results. In other words, SEO helps you 1. Ensure search engines can crawl and index your site efficiently. 2. Identify the searches where your marketplace can be a great match for what someone is looking for. And 3. Understand how you can create and optimize content that ranks high on search results pages. Ranking well is important because the search results page is a crowded place. First come the ads. 
Google lets paying customers cut the line to be featured as top results. Advertising is how Google makes its money, so they have an obvious incentive to maximize paid search visibility. To that end, Google also keeps developing its search algorithm and adding new SERP features. Its goal is to get users to spend as much time on Google as possible. Featured snippets, people also ask sections, and video and image results create engaging SERPs that keep people on the search results page. Some of these features even show an answer to the searcher's question right away. People can find out what they want to know without clicking on a result and leaving the results page at all. All this is to say that moving up in the rankings can bring a big boost to your organic traffic. The organic click-through rate, CTR, decreases rapidly the further down the page your marketplace is featured. Click-through rate is the number of clicks your organic results gets, divided by the number of times it is shown in the SERP, reported as impressions. The first result gets clicked about 30% of the time, the third less than 20% of the time, and only some 4% click on results 8 and 10. If your SEO efforts bring your page up from the result number 10 to number 1, you'll be 10 times more likely to receive a click. Let's look at what it takes to achieve that. What's required for SERP visibility? People also ask sections, featured snippets, and video results give brands new opportunities to rank through different content types. At the same time, the evolving SERPs and increasing competition make SEO increasingly challenging. In a nutshell, performing well in SEO requires 1. Structuring the entire marketplace website according to technical SEO best practices, which is a topic for a later episode in the series. 2. On page SEO. Ensuring that the technical aspects of content and keyword usage on individual pages play together to maximize your ability to rank for your chosen keywords. And three, off-page SEO. Building natural, high-quality backlinks from other websites that signal to Google that your page is reliable, or in other words, has authority. If this sounds like a lot of work, that's because it is. Michael Caldwell says, quote, Marketplace SEO isn't something you can do at arm's length. It needs to be woven into the DNA of the company, unquote. But there are opportunities for focused, encompassing SEO efforts exactly because most of your competitors aren't making the investment. That being said, SEO may not be the right growth channel for every marketplace at every stage. So before diving into the details of each aspect of SEO, it's important to understand if and when it offers the most substantial return on investment. Should you invest in marketplace SEO? Marketers today have a vast variety of options to pick and choose their marketing mix, from social media to various forms of paid advertising, influencer marketing, and PR. Why should they invest so heavily in this one channel? Almost 30% of all web traffic continues to come from search engines. For a single channel, that's a considerable share. And organic search traffic is often high quality. Because Google is so good at ranking the best content, the traffic search engines bring is usually highly targeted. Organic search results also tend to appear more reliable and authoritative to users than paid advertisements. A further big benefit of SEO as a growth strategy is that success doesn't hinge on the size of your marketing budget. Michael Caldwell knows this from experience. His first marketplace, Gigmasters, was a bootstrap business for several years, and yet the team managed to accumulate impressive growth through SEO. Quote, SEO is very well suited for a bootstrapped company. It's certainly not free, you spend hours and hours on it, but it's something you can do without a huge marketing budget. You just need hard work, a lot of research, a lot of testing, and trial and error, unquote. To assess whether the hard work is worth it, ask yourself three questions. One, is there an existing organic traffic opportunity my marketplace can leverage? Two, are there better channels for me to focus on first? Three, is now the right time to invest in SEO? Let's look at answers to each question in more detail. Is there organic demand for your marketplace? Mike van der Hayden says, quote, When you start a marketplace, the real golden nugget is, 
Understand how people search for your product or service online. What are people typing in when they're searching for your products? Unquote. Mike says a common problem for marketplaces is failing to understand whether or not there's organic demand for what they're offering. Some marketplaces come to the market with a product with existing search demand. This is typically the case for marketplaces whose supply side consists of established businesses. People often turn to Google looking for local services, events nearby, or real estate in a specific city. Large global players like Zillow, Eventbrite, and Thumbtack have leveraged these opportunities and used SEO as a key growth tactic. Zillow is a marketplace for real estate, Thumbtack for local professional services, and Eventbrite for events. All three platforms rank for high-volume keywords that are location or time-specific. People are looking for real estate in their city, plumbers nearby, or events today. Mike van der Hayden says, quote, Rolling out a marketplace like that means you can capitalize on that search demand a lot quicker and scale the marketplace a lot faster, unquote. The situation is very different for marketplaces like Uber, Lyft, and Airbnb. When these marketplaces first started, nobody was searching for ride-sharing because the service didn't truly exist yet. Even today, 90% of Uber's organic traffic comes from branded searches. People still aren't looking for ride-sharing in Melbourne, they're looking for Uber Melbourne. Or likely they're already downloading the app and not looking for anything at all. For the latter case, Mike's advice is to start small and focus first on validating your product market fit before building a big marketplace website. Quote, Understand whether or not search volume already exists, or whether you actually need to start creating educational pieces around what your services are, unquote. Do you have other stronger acquisition channels? SEO can be a powerful tool for building sustainable, defensible marketplace growth. But it's not the only tool. Like any marketplace growth strategy, what works for you depends on your marketplace type, niche, and audience. Some marketplaces have strong word of mouth or a social media component that makes investing in SEO a secondary priority. Poshmark, for example, is as much a social network as it is a product marketplace. Its growth strategy has centered around user engagement and community building since the early days. Another typical case is if you're building a mobile marketplace app and have minimal web footprint. In this case, your marketing priorities might lie elsewhere. Michael Caldwell notes, quote, Although I would argue that you're probably missing out on opportunities to acquire customers on the web that you could then drive to the app, unquote. Some marketplaces cater to audiences that don't habitually turn to Google for information. B2B businesses in very specialized expert fields are an example. Marketplaces like Scientist.com and Fredo's tackle complex B2B transactions where quality and reliability are essential. Both marketplace parties are probably much likelier to be found through direct B2B sales and outreach than on Google. Finally, some experts predict that the role of SEO in generating growth will deteriorate. Rand Fishkin, the founder of SparkToro, has said, quote, SEO in the future will be harder to invest in, harder to win at, with decreasing ROI, unquote. And we've all seen the headlines that tell us that Gen Z and other young people are looking for answers on TikTok and other social media channels rather than Google. That doesn't mean there's no point in SEO investments anymore, just that you shouldn't put all of your eggs in one basket. The SparkToro blog is a great resource for marketing strategies beyond SEO. Is now the right time to invest in SEO? Generally speaking, the right time to start thinking about SEO is now. Especially for technical considerations, the earlier you start, the better. Gregory Edwards says, quote, if you lay a good foundation for your site quality and information architecture, it can get rid of most of the legwork. When it comes to driving traffic through SEO, marketplaces might want to hold off making a bigger investment until they've built a high-quality initial supply. According to a study by Lenny Rachitsky, most marketplaces have leveraged SEO for their demand site acquisition and used different approaches to build supply. This makes sense. Usually, building a high-quality supply requires building relationships and selling your solution, while the demand side is likelier to Google solutions to their questions. So when is the right time to start investing in SEO? 
when you've built your initial marketplace supply and are ready to start driving customers to them. This is what Michael Caldwell did with both Gigmasters and Petworks. Quote, We didn't think about SEO right away. With Gigmasters, we knew we first needed to just get musicians on the platform. We sent out lots of emails, we went to clubs to hand out flyers, we went to music festivals, unquote. Once the supply was on board, the team started thinking about strategies to drive demand. Quote, when you're bringing customers to the platform, that's the moment when you need to start thinking about making the investment in SEO. You can get into it later, certainly, but I would highly recommend founders to keep SEO expertise in mind already when building the team, unquote. However, even if you're in the stage where growing the demand is a priority, your growth objectives may mean other growth strategies that suit you better. If you need to see substantial growth very quickly, SEO might not work for you. For all its potential, SEO is slow to provide return on investment. If you don't have six months to wait for traffic to accumulate, you might consider starting with a different growth strategy. Marketplace SEO looks at how SEO knowledge and tools can benefit marketplaces specifically. Many SEO tactics and strategies apply to most, if not all, websites. Marketplaces, however, have characteristics that make SEO more challenging. At the same time, marketplace businesses have unique opportunities that can boost their SEO efforts. Getting started with SEO in as challenging a field as marketplaces might feel like a big undertaking but understanding the basics can already help you drive growth for your marketplace. Throughout this series, my goal is to help you figure out the core SEO improvements you can make to your marketplace website. If you see an impact and want to learn more, you have a foundation on which to build deeper SEO expertise. Gregory Edwards says, quote, In the beginning, you will not know everything, and that might seem like a bad thing or quite daunting. But the industry is constantly evolving, and there's a wide scope of areas that can be looked at in more and more detail granularly. If you are eager to learn and genuinely interested in the world of SEO, you will flourish. Unquote. The following episodes of this series look at the following things. The specific opportunities and challenges SEO presents to marketplaces. Technical SEO. Keyword research and creating a keyword strategy creating keyword-rich content for your marketplace, and link-building strategies for marketplaces specifically. Each episode shares insightful advice from Mike van der Hayden, Michael Caldwell, and Gregory Edwards. All episodes also include some tips for SEO tools and techniques that can help you investigate your SEO performance, find keyword opportunities, write great content, and measure your SEO development. The field of SEO is vast and constantly evolving, so diving deeper into general SEO practices is a good idea at some point. This concludes the first episode of our Marketplace SEO series. We've compiled excellent resources on SEO in the descriptions of each episode. In this episode's description, you can find amazing SEO experts to follow online, as well as a list of SEO tools to consider as you start working on your search engine optimization. Next, please join me on an episode on the specific challenges and opportunities of marketplace SEO.